Run, river, run, run through the hills. Run, river, run to the sea. Run, river, run to your place beneath the sun. Run, river, run over me. Hi, this is Jan Lewis. Welcome to be my guest. We have Marie Chabot with us today, and Marie is a singer and a songwriter, and I read about you, welcome Marie, in the Blackstone Valley Express. You had performed at the uh, the St. Peter's Church in Northboro. If you're not from around here, it's a, it's a neighbor, uh, I'm sorry, Northbridge, it's a neighboring town. And you just told me you play at every Mass. Well, every Saturday evening Mass at the 4.30 Mass. What, what do you like to play for that? Um, I play the organ up in the choir loft and the You play piano. the organ, too, in the <laughs> yeah. piano? Now, yeah. she, you are originally from Nashville. Nope, I'm originally from North Attleboro. Yeah. And then later on, um, when I was older, I moved to Nashville for a while. Is that how you got your interest? Um, I... You know, I grew up in a musical family. My parents always had music playing. Um, so we got um, lessons, music lessons at a very young age. My older sister and I, yeah. and then later my younger brother. And um, I always loved to sing. So I was in all the musical productions at high, in high school. Yeah. And I went to um, Elms College in Chicopee. Now I grew up in Wilbraham. That's not that far. Yeah. It's, Elms College, is it still there? It's still there, yeah. What did you major in? Let me I, guess. <laughs> I, no, you're wrong. <laughs> no? It wasn't music. She was a business major, no? <laughs> no, I was a theater major. Theater major? A real practical. Theater major, music minor. <laughs> oh, okay, because my parents went to Emerson, and that's big on, like, broadcasting yeah. and theater. Yeah. Yeah. So you went to Elm. I went to the Elms. Uh, came back. My first job was as an English teacher at Bishop Feehan High School. Where is that? In Attleboro. Okay. Um, it was not my... Cup of tea. How could you be an English teacher if you? Major? Well, because theater, because theater, English, arts. Really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, anyway, so but I really all I wanted to really do was sing, and I started singing in coffee houses and clubs when I was going to college, kind of to help pay tuition. Sure. Um, so I continued to do that, um, and then I, I taught for a year, and then I got married, and um, my husband was very supportive of my music and so after about six years we moved to Nashville Tennessee um, where I started doing demo work for other artists I was singing backup vocals for other people yeah, <laughs> so yeah that was that was a lot of fun but my my husband um, was killed in a car accident after we only been there for about a year how long so, did you get married uh, six years did you have children no 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 um, he was awfully young he, we were both 30 Oh my God! So yeah, so so that kind of threw me for a loop and changed Definitely. my whole direction. And what? How did it change you? Um. Well, we had just started to make a life for ourselves. Yeah. You know, we were young, we were enthusiastic, we were devoting a lot of time to music and my career. Um, but we both were practical. We had real jobs, you know, yeah. so that we would support ourselves. And things were just starting to take off. We were starting to talk about having children because we were settling. And yeah. I was very happy singing in studios. I I was performing at night. I was singing in studios. I was working at a mortgage company during the day. Oh, my God. And he was installing um, sound systems in all these apartment buildings were going up in Nashville. It was a big boom. Yeah. And so he his job as an electrician was to do all the, the sound sure. and the alarm systems. So so we were happy. We were doing well. Um, then, you know, he had the car accident. And um, after that, you know, my parents wanted me to come back home because my whole family was here. And yeah. I kept thinking, what? but that wouldn't be right because we were just getting somewhere. And if I came back, mm. they would all envelop me and that would be... It for my career because I would let them take care of me and I, I couldn't do that so I went back to Nashville I stayed with the mortgage company I stayed doing the music I was doing but then um, the housing boom kind of crashed and mm. so there was no mortgage job after a while I got laid off and um, I got a an agent out of Atlanta called me I had been sending my tapes everywhere yeah. this agent called and said um are you free to travel and I thought Sure, I'm free to travel. And he goes, well, I have a gig in Okinawa. And I went, oh, okay, where's that? Japan. <laughs> Japan? He's like, it's Japan. <laughs> it's like, oh. oh. Were you ready so, to fly? I, yeah, I went. I said, I was on the plane, and I thought to myself, what have I done? Was it in front of troops or the Marines? No, it was, uh, it was a six-month gig at an American hotel on Okinawa that had two um, 
two entertainment rooms. Six months? Yeah, I was there for six months. <laughs> I would have been so homesick. I, I well, did. it was funny because my I tell my kids the story, and they're like, yeah, but Mom, you know, you could call people, you had internet. No, we didn't have no. internet back then. No, no. <laughs> it took two weeks before my mother got through with a phone call. And yeah. when she called me finally I was so relieved to hear her voice because I felt like I was in the end of the at the end of the world yeah, you know it was, yeah. and it was a different culture and it was different but actually it was probably one of the best decisions I ever made because yeah. going there it was a healing process you know my husband had passed away yeah. I was on this tropical island all I had to worry about was singing every night how did you eat did they feed you too yeah I had vouchers um, I had taxi vouchers and I had vouchers for food and there were certain restaurants that I could Use them and at, the pay so. was good, right? It was really good. I sent everything home so that when I came home, I'd have time to find a job. <laughs> wow, you are good at being alone I, out there. It's well, it was it was the first time I'd ever been alone. Um, so it was interesting. I, I well, I say I sent all my money home. I sent all my paychecks home, but I was making tips, so I was living off my tips and sending the money home. So people in your audience would tip you, would give you tips. Yeah, and it's really funny because in Japan they don't tip, and so. The Japanese people know that Americans do tip, so yeah. they would, they would fold up these little origami things and put money in them, and then come up to the piano and put them on the piano, and then run back to their seats. <laughs> they put, they would put change in it, an origami. No, it, was, it would be money, money like uh, bills. They would do it all like the, yeah. Uh, yeah my husband does this. Middle, he it's... just could, he does this real. I don't know how he does it. It's and amazing. So, I don't either. Did I, you like, know at first what they were doing? No, I thought, what is this? That's cute. And then I opened it up, and there was money, and I thought, wow. How 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 much were they good? Ten twenty dollars? The, yeah, they were good tippers. Oh no wonder you did really. Were you like every night? It was six nights a week. Oh my god. Yeah. What time? From what time? Um, it was from I believe it was like six at night till like. Midnight, maybe. So you came back from Okinawa. When did you pick up? Were you playing guitar there? I was playing piano. You there was a piano. piano bar. So when did you get into your guitar? Guitar. I started. I always played guitar during high school. Yeah. Um, but some of my songs lend themselves more to piano because I basically I started as a keyboardist. Yeah. Um, but I like the guitar because it's portable. You yeah. Know, take yeah. it where you. Definitely. Want to so you've been playing when you got back since then. Um, pretty much. I, I, when I got back to the States, I stayed in Nashville for another, for the rest of the year. So yeah. it was like May through December. Then um, the agent asked me if I wanted to travel again, and I thought, sure. And so he sent me to um, Scandinavia. Scandinavia? Yeah, but it was winter, and I didn't know. I, I had no concept of, of the, you know, the days when it was all dark. Oh, my God. Are you serious? <laughs> that sounds like Alaska. So like, yeah, well... I got there in February, so it, it was cold, yeah. really cold. And then by the time it was spring and it was getting to be nice weather, it was yeah. time for me to come back home. So. so then you came back home to Nashville or to Attleboro? To Nashville. I went back to Nashville. And you were playing there. I was playing there. I was doing the studio work again, but I found after I traveled so much, when I went back to Nashville, all the connections that I had had were gone. Were gone. Okay. So it was hard. It was like starting from scratch. Sure. Um, so then I met um, a studio engineer that I married and I had we had three children yeah but the marriage did not work out yeah. and so um how old are your kids now my kids my oldest is 24 mine's 26 oh, oh 20 yeah 26 yeah. okay my daughter's my that's my son my oldest son and that's then my, my daughter is 22 yeah. Yeah. and then I have <clears throat> my youngest son is 19 and he goes to college in Worcester so oh he does yeah oh. Becker Oh gosh, my niece tried, went there for a little while. Yeah, I remember that. Now, you so you came to North Attleboro when? How many years ago to North Attleboro? Uh, I moved back here in two thousand. How did now? How did you and, and the uh, Northbridge Church find each other? <laughs> well, when I came here, well, let's go back a little bit. When I came back from Scandinavia and I was in Nashville, um, I didn't want to sing in clubs anymore. I got right. pregnant fairly quickly after I got married, and mm -hmm. I didn't want to do that but I did want to do music yeah. and during high school there had been a time where I had played in different churches you know yeah. as an organist um, mm -hmm. and I thought well I'll just look for that kind of job so mm -hmm. I found a job in in the in downtown Nashville as a music director at a church a Catholic church yeah. and I loved it and mm -hmm. I, I had this choir this great qu sounding choir yeah. and while I was there um, it wasn't enough money to yeah. support me but it was fun and I liked it and so I used to go between masses I used to go over to the rectory and one day I was reading the want ads and the pastor came in and said what are you doing 
<laughs> I said, I'm looking at want ads, and he thought I was going to leave. And I said, I said, no, I need additional income. I'm not yeah. leaving. And he yeah. said, oh, well, we have uh, another position open, the director of education oh. for the for the school. And you I mean said, Sunday school type? Yeah. yeah. I said, I can't do that. I don't have that. that that's not... I don't want to do that. And he said, but you have education. You've gone to Catholic schools. Yeah. You've been a teacher. Why not? And I said, I just don't want to do it. So so you did it. <laughs> well, I didn't plan on doing it. But one day at the pulpit, he said, um, so I found our new director of education. Um, and I'm thinking, I'm off the hook. No, you know, it's you. <laughs> he ne- yeah, he, t- he said me in front yeah. of all these people. Okay, I mean, that's kind of. Yeah, That's he's sweet. from New York. So, yeah. okay. <laughs> so after mass, I jumped off the organ bench and I was, I was angry. Yeah, and I was heading for him. And between the time I got off the organ till I got to him, so many people came and stopped me and said, "Oh, this is great! You're going to be great! We love it! This is great!" So well, how can you say no now? Right. Well, I I said I'll take it under one condition, mm-hmm. and he said, "What's that?" And I said that you let me get some kind of education to do what I'm doing. So it ended up, I, yeah. I got a scholarship and got a master's degree in religious education. So when I came back here in 2000, yeah. I, had work, I had worked as a music director and I had worked as a director of religious ed. So I was looking for both kinds of jobs. I kind of cast a wide net. and yeah. um, So I've done a little bit of both since then. All right, now she's brought a guitar with us and a song. Play for us. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so... Yeah, so I mentioned that I lost my husband when we were 30, and I kind of um, didn't deal with that very well. I sort of, like, I, I made myself busy with a thousand other things so that I wouldn't really have to think the about what I was doing. The depression must be terrible. Oh. It, was, it was hard, but then a few years ago, I lost my father and my mother within six months of each other. Oh. And having to go through that again brought back all the memories that I'd have of Glenn when they he, must when have he been passed young. away. By today's standards? Well, they were in their eighties when they Still, passed. Still, that's yeah. Yeah. So so anyway, so I started thinking about, you know, all the people in my life and, and what they've meant to me and the people mm. that have gone beyond and uh-huh. so I wrote this song actually for my husband, um, that had passed. But um but I didn't write it till recently, no, so it's recent. we're so, talking with singer um and songwriter. Marie Shebo, and she's going to play for us. So this is a song called The Other Side of Someday. Um, I'm working on a new album. I'm going back to Nashville next week, actually, mm-hmm. to finish it up. And the album's called The Other Side, and there's a song about it for each of those people, from my husband, from my father, from my mother. Um, there's a song about my grandparents. It's all about me, but it's about sort of about coping with right. with, with the other life. Yes. Sure. So Almost paranormal. Yeah. Well, <laughs> this is uh, this is called the other side. Yeah. No, it's still a little. I love your guitar. Oh. Is this one you've had for years? This one? Yeah. This is fairly new. It's I bought beautiful. this about two years ago. Oh, it's gorgeous. Yeah. Thank you. Someday, I 
that especially is the refrain it comes back and then it catches you da, 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 da. Yeah. and it keeps coming back that's genius I love wow, that thank you. so you wrote that when um I wrote it probably about a year ago a year ago yeah now where else do you play your guitar where do you go um I haven't been playing much lately I played at the end of December I did a few um gigs around town I did um the Gulu Gulu Cafe in Salem, Mass. You were up in Salem. Yep, and I played um, Massachusetts. The Mansfield Mass um, Arts Society has a little theater that they have, so I did a Christmas concert there. Um, was the one in Salem during Halloween? No, no, actually, no. It was right before Christmas. It was right before Christmas. So, yeah. How did they find out about you? Um, I kind of set inquiries out. There's a there's a couple of of guides that are out there for New England um, places that, that host sure. singer-songwriters. And so I just kind of cast a net and see. How can they reach you, Marie? Oh, I have a website. Um, it's www.mariechabot.org. And all my information is on there. Um, C-H-A-B-O-T. Yeah, C-H-A-B-O-T. It's M-A-R-I-E-C-H-A-B-O-T dot org. And um, it has all my social media contacts. I have a Facebook page. I have a SoundCloud page. I have a... Twitter. Yeah. So, but all that's on my website. And she's not far away. She's in North Attleboro. Now, uh, people can reach you if they'd like to sign you up to appear somewhere. Sure. Right? And I also do a couple of presentations um, as, a, as a speaker and a musician. Um, I have one that I do about um, women singer-songwriters from the 60s, 70s, and 80s. And I do another one, um, another workshop on how to write a song. I believe everybody has a song inside. Yeah. And so it's kind of like a, a, a workshop where yeah. I teach how to express that in music. But all that information, again, is on the website. That is fantastic. So, so it's almost, it's, do you do workshops at all? Yeah, I yeah. do. Yeah, where, where do you do those? Um, I haven't really done any here. Um, I've done a couple in Fall River. Yeah. Um, but that's something that I'm kind of exploring, just beginning to Where have do. you given your presentations? Um, I did a woman's retreat up in um, Cohasset, Cohasset, Massachusetts. Yeah, the South yeah. Shore. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You did up there. Was that fun? I loved it, yeah. you stay overnight? Um, I haven't, no, but I'm open to that. I think that's great. So you'll, you'll go, how far will you travel? Um, I go pretty far. I've, I've gone all the way up to um, Albany, New York. Yeah? And, um, and, as, and I do um, Rhode Island and Connecticut as well. So. Now, see, if you're in North Attleboro, there's a lot of places down there, too, because my parents were in Foxborough. Um, there's a Unitarian church right there in the center of Foxborough. There's a lot of places will be very open to have you. I mean, every, every Sunday or Saturday night, you're over in Northbridge at the Rockda in Rockdale at the Catholic Church, St. Mm -hmm. Peter's. Yeah. And you're playing the organ. Yeah. They have a beautiful, it's a pipe organ. That's yeah. a really old organ. So nice. what, you learned, you play the guitar, organ, and, and, <clears throat> and, and, piano. and the piano. What does your husband think? Does he ever come and watch you? Um, my ex? Or, yeah, well, yeah. Well, well, the, yeah, the, the no. kids, you Wait, know, the no. kids come. The kids come. <laughs> the kids come. <laughs> yeah. The kids come. And they, they must be really, really proud of you with They're, all the talent. It's, it, it's exciting for me because they're all into music, but it's all in different forms. Like my... my oldest son went to Becker College as well, and mm -hmm. he um, is in video game design. Mm -hmm. um, but he has a specialization in audio, and he writes mm -hmm. music for games. Mm -hmm. And then my youngest son, who also goes to Becker, he's mm -hmm. in video production, but he's more on the programming end. Mm -hmm. But he, he writes all this rap stuff, which I... Oh, well, is totally is... different from what I... But okay, is he the one in his 20s? He's 19. Yeah, well, they're about the same. <laughs> yeah, I've got one of those. Oh, yeah, they're rapping. <laughs> I, tell, I tell people that it's a gas. One day I just borrowed Woodstock. I was too young to go, but I, of course I loved the music growing up. Yeah. And 
I borrowed it from the library. Uh-huh. And I thought, oh, I'm going to get razzed big time. He was fascinated. My son is so outspoken, and I thought, oh, this is the end for me. He loved it. I said, <laughs> I want you to keep in mind we didn't all do drugs. <laughs> how fun it was, you know, what was it, that nude thing when they were going down the mudslide and stuff like that? We were a fun group. The, the, the boomers and they, his group, I don't know, they just in a different world. Yeah. Well, my son like, actually likes all the music that I played when he was growing up, too, so. He likes that. It's okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, he, I mean, this last past summer, he wanted to go see Hall & Oates. Oh, really? Which, yeah, so we did. That was kind of fun. Where are you going to be appearing next? Um, I don't have anything scheduled for no. a while. I'm going to Nashville next week mm -hmm. to finish the album. I've got two more songs to do. It's an album of eight songs. Is it going to be like a, 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 C, a CD? Yeah, it's a CD. When will that come out? Um, probably in June. Can you let me know? Yeah, I will definitely. definitely. have you on. Okay. Now, have you got another song for us? Do you want another? Yes, definitely. <laughs> okay. <laughs> of course. Um, this is a brand new one, so you have to bear with me. Terrific. Oh. I've, I've never played, this is a virgin performance. I've That's never okay. played this for anybody before. That's what, well, we're, virgins are welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is a song that I wrote for my dad. Yep. Get up every morning to make coffee for my mom. Try to make his breakfast quietly Turn the radio on low But he had to sing along Sometimes he just whistle off key Every little breeze I talk to the trees Cats in the cradle And I walk the line I get up really early Just to hear him sing his song smiling if I would sing along And when there was a thunderstorm we'd sit out on the porch listening to the driving rain beating on our roof and told me that the angels were bowling up above and the strikes they hit lit up the sky as proof they were showing off for me and you Everybody in our town knew my dad by name They'd smile and say hello when we walked by I'd ask him, Daddy, who was that? With a twinkle in his eye He'd say it doesn't matter Before he passed away? No, I wrote this last week. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, <really>? yeah. <laughs> and it's called "And the Angels." And the Angels Bowl, which is kind of a, a if you knew my dad, yeah, he would think that was hysterical because you like bowling. He liked that. Well, he loved to bowl, yeah. but he also liked the song "And the Angels Sing." Yeah. So I thought, well, yeah, but they bowl too. So oh, this one's for him. <laughs> God, I think that's terrific. Do you have any? Hmm. Anybody left, like aunts, alive in your family? Or? Well, it's, it's interesting that you should ask. My um, The only aunt that I had left that was, well, I have another aunt that, that was married to my father's brother, mm -hmm. but the only one of his siblings that was left um, passed away in October. Oh, wow. So, um, 
So yeah, that was my sister and my brother and I went out to California because that's where she she lived in the Mojave Desert. Oh, so, <laughs> so that was an experience. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Yeah, it's like if you go from zero weather here to the Mojave Desert, like oh, yeah. Well, extremes. it was dreams. <laughs> yeah, it was it was really interesting. I had never. Um, do you miss Nashville? I do miss Nashville. Good, well, you're going back to visit. I go a lot. I have friends there. Okay, how long there. are you going to be gone this time? Only a couple of days. Because okay. I had to, I have to be back for my job. For your job, yeah. At the, have you ever thought of, um, you know, as you were playing, I'm thinking of the calming feeling of your music, and I'm thinking about uh, assisted living. Oh, senior centers, assisted living. Um, I did yeah. sing for a while. There's a. a a part of in Worcester, there's a big hospital there that has UMass Memorial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Uh, uh, yeah, but there's a there's a part of it. It starts with an S. I can't think of the name. But I I used to sing there. Weekly. Do you mean like you come in the lobby and then there's that little out o- oval there? Yes. They had you sing in there. Yes. Kind of like a half shell before the uh, gift shop. Yeah, I was yeah. there for I I did quite a few evenings. You were there. there. But um. But then they changed hands, and I somehow lost track of the We had, uh, I think the head psychiatrist at UMass was on, oh, one of our first shows when we were over temporarily in another site, and he brought on four of his patients who were musicians. Oh. And where I met them, I walked into the lobby one day, and I heard he was there with the patients who were playing. I never forgot that. I thought that was true. That's really cool. How did they get a hold of you? I don't know. It was somebody who heard me. A lot of it's word of mouth. That that was one of those where somebody knew somebody who knew somebody that called me, and I said, "Sure." I would try it again <laughs> over there because they've got that little, yeah, that little thing. It was a nice little place. It was a yeah. Nice and that's to hear that when you walk in is just happy. Yeah. It's just plain happy. You'd be a shoo in. Um, yeah, I wouldn't give up on that. But I know you. I used to be a volunteer there. I was on a committee. Um, I would think they'd pretty be open to this. I hope they haven't stopped doing that because that was one of the happiest things I'd ever heard. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if they still do, but I would think they would still do it. Well, we've been talking with Mary Chabot, and she is a wonderful <laughs> songwriter, singer. You've heard two of her songs. I, we have to close, but how again can they reach you, Mary? Um, my website is mariechabot.org, so www.mariechabot.org. And you are open to any gigs people want you to come? Sure. You can contact me through my website. Sure. Any senior centers? Any, um, gosh, uh, as I said, the uh, assisted living (coughs) place. The the music is so happy and calming. I'm just thinking, where is she? Places you're (laughs) needed, where you're needed. Um, There are plenty. All right. Don't don't uh, don't discount don't discount that because there are a lot of those places around. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Well, thank you. We'll get you. you back on. Now, you're going to be, your, your, your album's coming out. It should come out in ju- early June. Okay. Contact me, and we'll get you back on. All right. Here's some Sounds of her good. new albums. We'll get to see her new CD. Oh, new yeah. CD. Have something to show. <laughs> oh, God. This is great. We'll get you on. Uh, you'll be on uh, your website for that, right? Yep. Yes. Thank you for being with us. Well, thanks for having me. We'll be seeing you. All right. Take care.